welcome to this video where we finally, finally got those sweet, sweet poetry sales numbers. I'm so excited about this. This isn't exactly what I was looking for, but this is closer than anything else I ever came across. And another thing, the site that has all this stuff seems to have quite a lot of stuff that falls into this category. And I'm kind of mad at the Google machine for not fucking bringing this site up to me when I was like typing all sorts of shit. And again, maybe it's the site's problem. The site that we're talking about today is a site called Words Rated. Maybe their SEO is shit. I, I can't believe it with all their fucking ads that they fucking have on there. But maybe the guy in charge of SEO doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. But I have been looking and I found this by fucking complete accident when I was researching something for the last episode. So it's just like, what the fuck? I kind of want to get into this right now. So let's just fucking jump in dick first and see what happens so here we are okay so poetry sales statistics now this is from february 14th this was a nice little valentine's day gift for me that they didn't tell me about but fuck it's this year so i'll fucking take it now a lot of the information in here is going to be stats from all different years that there is information about but here we are so let's take a look at it here look it's a beautiful stock photo. Oh, look, someone's reading because their finger's in the book. I got two books open at once because they're really hardcore readers. All right, so this is by... Oh, are you fucking with me, dude? Um, Dimitri... We're, we're going to stop at Dimitri. So here are poetry sales statistics. Over 10,156 poetry books have been published each year. As of 2013. Now, I'm going to guess that that is a estimate, but I don't know why there would be a six in that estimate. Um, from 2002 to 2013, over 121,000 poetry books were published in the U.S. Um, or just over 10,000 per year. So, what this is saying that more books are being published as of 2013 to now than before, okay? Um, not a, a huge amount, but growth is growth, okay? But I will say, if the exact same number of books allegedly are being published, and I'm assuming this is by the big presses, the small presses, and probably the academic presses and i okay so i'd say big presses academic presses maybe some small presses poetry book publishing has been stagnant since 2004 hovering around 10,000 published titles a year with a peak of almost 14,000 in 2009 growth is growth but if the peak was almost 14,000 and we haven't hit that since 2009 that's a problem from 2013 to 2017, unit sales of poetry books increased by 21%, making it one of the fastest growing categories during this period. This is huge. And what do you think that's from? What do you think that's from? What do you think that's from? Tell me what you think that's from. From 2013 to 2017, the fastest growing category. Why do you think that is? Insta poetry. Rupee Cower. Yes, this is correct the fastest growing category but to be fair if you weren't selling that much anyway all of a sudden selling a lot you're going to be a fast growing category from 2004 to 2007 over 12.2 million poetry books were sold in total this means that on average over 3.06 million poetry books were sold between 2004 and 2007. So that's just up to 2007. But then we have from 2013 to 2017, the fastest growing category. So we could assume that that means more were sold during that time, but we don't have the actual numbers for that for some reason. That's the problem I'm having with this article. There, It's going all over the place, but there's not any like hard numbers on a lot of the stuff. Okay, so during the same period, the top 10 poetry books accounted for over 22% of 
of all sales in the category. Top 10 was 22%. That is better than, or it's probably the same actually, is the top books being like like 96% of all the sales that the big publishers do. So I don't know, I don't know. Even with the growth of poetry sales from 2013 to 2017, interest in poetry is still on the decline and stands at almost half of the 2004 levels. So what this is saying is that the people who like poetry are buying more poetry. The other thing that I would like to throw in here as something is especially since the rise of the internet and Amazon and eBay and half price books and aid books, better world books and all of these other places that you could buy secondhand books online now as well as secondhand shops. I know a lot of people buy their poetry books secondhand. I would say probably half of my poetry books are secondhand poetry books. So if that's the case, then that's going to be an issue. The other thing is, how many of these are backlist titles compared to frontlist titles? That's what I want to fucking know. That's like seriously one of the biggest things. Because if all these people are just buying fucking Emily Dickinson collections, like, what the fuck is that? Like, that doesn't help anything. That doesn't help anything showing what I mean it shows that people are interested in poetry but it doesn't show that poetry is growing if new books aren't selling although I will say the 2013 to 2017 increase tells me that it's growing even though the interest is not okay so it's on the decline based on 2004 levels okay okay okay, 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 okay. I'm answering my own fucking questions here just before we go any further if you're digging what I'm doing here, can you please break that thumb button? Just smash it, break it, take it to town, stick it up your butt. I'd appreciate it. It helps everything if you're watching on YouTube. And for those of you who are just listening to the audio version of this podcast on iTunes or on my website or something like that, if you want to actually see the graphs I'm going to be showing here, come back and watch this on my YouTube channel um, and you can see the graphs and stuff because this graph here is kind of shocking but it has some good news i think so here's a graph of popularity of poetry over time and this goes from 2004 to um 2022 and um i don't know exactly uh, and this this data is obtained from google trends so that makes sense um google trends is a funny thing to think about because it does show what people are searching for and what they're like thinking about but uh, when did instagram start let, let me let me do a google search here okay so instagram started in 2010 twitter started in 2006 i'm curious about tumblr i had a tumblr i probably still do i haven't been there forever 2007 all right so let's see here 2010 instagram starts 2006 twitter starts here's what i'm going to say about this google trends you can see this giant decrease so 2004 whatever 2005 facebook starts 2006 twitter starts 2007 tumblr starts this decrease since this is just from google trends i'm going to assume that this decrease we see here going from 100 to right over 50 shows me that people aren't just using google to search for stuff anymore people were searching on facebook people were searching on twitter people were searching on tumblr for their poetry okay then this kind of flattens out and then instagram happens in 2010 and then we have a another big drop to 2013 2014 2015 and then by this time, all the buzz about Ruby Cower, all the buzz about Insta Poetry is going to be taking off. And I'm wondering if Google is actually trending the word or if when they did this trend line here, they were looking at Insta Poetry as one word or if they were just looking at poetry. And then if Google would take that and go, oh, well, Insta Poetry has poetry in the title. So that's how we'll do this. 
Sorry for the flicker. I hope that's not actually happening on the recording. Okay, so here we go. So from 2015, or 2016 is the increase in between 15 and 16. It's going up. 2017. Now right here, we're at about 50. We're about what we were at at uh, 2006, 2007. Okay? I think this was the height of insta poetry and the plateau but again i don't think people were looking on google for their poetry they were just going on instagram for it or going on amazon to buy it like amazon is like the third or the second biggest search engine in the world so if you're looking for something to buy you're probably not going to first go to google and i think before like 2004 that wasn't the fucking case so then we have a couple more dips, and then we have another rise coming right now. And this one looks pretty steep. I'm really excited to see where this goes. Okay, so anyway, how many people read poetry? As of 2017, over 11.7% of U.S. adults read poetry at least once a year. So this study has not been done since 2017. But in 2017, over 11% U.S. adults read poetry at least once a year now if that means they read a poem that's sad but you know whatever this was an increase of more than 75 percent compared to 2012 when only 6.7 percent of americans were reading poetry books at least once a year okay so now this is saying poetry books okay so that's cool so that's interesting um an increase is an increase now watch. Whenever I say, hey, growth is growth, the next thing is, however, you fuck. However, this is still below the 2002 level of 12.1% of U.S. citizens reading poetry books during a year. Now, I just want to make it clear here. This says 12.1% of U.S. citizens, where the first one said 117 of U.S. adults. I believe there are probably more kids and teenagers reading poetry than adults anyway. So I think that number is probably a bit skewed. Going back further, in 1992, over 17% of Americans read at least one poetry book in the last 12 months. I, I, don't, I don't discount that at all. When I was a kid and when my nieces and nephews were kids, like right after me being a kid... Shel Silverstein was still huge, and every fucking kid had Where the Sidewalk Ends. I don't know if that's just listed under poetry, but I know, like, Edgar Allan Poe was being taught in every fucking school I went to. Dr. Seuss, again, I don't know if that's considered poetry um, by this chart standards, or if the people are like, oh, well, that rhymed, that works. But, like, I know that that stuff was really popular. I'm sure a lot of it still is, but I don't know. I'm old as fuck now, so what the fuck do I know? 14.5% of women stated that they've read poetry during the past 12 months, when only 8.7% of men made the same statement. Again, I think this would fall into the Insta Poetry category. Um, this makes women 67% more likely to read poetry than men. I don't doubt it. And I'm not going to say anything weird about this, but I, I'll let you guys know this for my YouTube channel, demographically speaking. Before I went strict poetry on my channel, and my channel was more like like paperbacks, pulps, book reviews, book hauls, stuff like that, my demographics were, uh, I would say, 60 to 70% men. And then 40 to 30% women, give or take. When I first changed the channel over, last time I saw it, um, this was like probably last fall sometime. My stats were like 50-50 split. It was like 49-51 men and women. I checked yesterday, like just looking at other shit and I like came across it or whatever. My stats now are 88 percent female uh, um to male and i was like how the fuck did that happen so either the majority of my new subs have been women and some of the men who were watching my like pulp 
stuff, shoot them up stuff, and all this other shit. They're like, I can't handle this poetry pussy shit. And so, fucking good riddance. Like, fuck off. I don't give a shit if you're that fucking, like, insecure about your fucking manhood. But, um, no. Like, I fucking believe those numbers like a heart attack, dude. Like, as soon as I started doing, like, basically all poetry, my male subscribers dropped off. So, um, yeah, that's legit. That is legit. Americans ages 18 to 34 are the only group that reads poetry over the national average, with 17.5% of people ages 18 to 24 reading poetry at least once a year, and 12.3% of people ages 25 to 34 doing the same. I want to know what the how young they went, or if they just did 18 and up. Because I would bet that if you went like high school age, it would be even higher. Um, only 9.9% of people between the ages of 45 and 54 read poetry books at least once a year. God damn it, I'm in the fucking 9%, son! All right, which format do poetry readers prefer? This is crazy. And yes, I'm clapping on that, dude. Clap, clap, clap. Because I have not seen this at all. So if you listening to this or you watching this fall into this category fucking let me know throw a motherfucker a bone here okay so let's say this 29.3 percent of poetry readers read poetry only in print books that sounds low for poetry 28.2 percent of poetry readers use only ebooks to read poetry and that sounds high that sounds really fucking high. And I'm wondering if this is back to the 2017 numbers. But even then, like, that sounds really fucking high. 9.9% .9 of people only listen to poetry in audio format. And I'm wondering if that is just, like, slam poets and shit like that. Because I don't know how... Like, it says audio format. So it's not saying, like, audio books. So I'm wondering, like, if that's, like, YouTube videos or reels or TikToks. Or what that actually means. I bet that that is a bit vague when it comes to that. And that's why it says audio format. That's just me. 32.6% of people use both digital channels, ebooks, and audio to read poetry. Poetry readers are among the most digital friendly book readers as over 70.7% .7 of them do not buy print books to read poetry. That is the number that is just fucking mind-boggling to me like i just cannot believe it like from me in my world my print poetry books and my chat books have demolished any kind of ebook i've done with poetry and i've tried it over the years tried doing different things they just fucking eviscerate those fucking books whereas my fiction, like my ebooks, dwarf the sales that my print books do. So, this thing to me is like really weird. And it might be an age thing and the type of poetry I write. I, I don't know. And maybe people who are used to reading Instagram and all this other shit are used to reading poetry on their phone. So, like having it also on their phone to read like a ebook of maybe makes more sense i this this just blew my mind but i'm also wondering if the people who were asked about this if they actually said i buy ebooks to read poetry or if when talking about reading digital poetry they were just talking about like reading shit on instagram or on twitter or on tumblr or something like that so i don't know like that that thing just that blew my fucking mind. So maybe I need to go a little harder on digital. Uh, poetry book sales in the UK, 12 million in the year 2018. That's not bad. 12 million pounds. During the same year, over 1.3 million poetry books were sold. Poetry book revenue in the UK increased by 15% in 2018 over 2017, which was already 13% bigger compared to 2016. That makes sense. 
I actually sell a lot of books in the UK. So, and UK shipping costs suck fucking dick compared to every other country I ship to. Just saying. Um, the average poetry book in the UK costs around um, nine and a half pounds as of 2018. 66.7% of poetry buyers are under the age of 34. Makes sense. 41% of poetry readers in the UK are girls and women between the ages of 13 and 22. That makes sense. Oh, we have some Insta Poetry stats here. Insta Poetry was the driving factor behind the rise of poetry's poetry books popularity in the US in 2017 and 2018. What about before that? What's happening here? And you have 2018 numbers, and this is the first we've heard of it in America? Oh, and we have 2019 numbers, and this is the first we've heard about it? In 2019, seven of the top 20 Amazon best-selling poetry books were written by Instapoets. I would think it would be more, actually. This trend is especially popular in Canada, where Instapoets account for the majority of poetry book sales. Dude, that is something you got to be scared of. In 2017, 80% of all poetry books sold in Canada were written by Instapoets, and in 2018, this group accounted for over 70% of all poetry sales. Book! Even in 2020, over 49% of all poetry sales were still coming from Instapoets. So obviously, the Instapoet boom is on its downswing now. Let's see what this chart says. Percentage of poetry book sales coming from Instapoets in Canada. <laughs> I don't understand why you do graphs of stuff that you just talked about. Like, I just heard these numbers. This is fine. Okay, whatever. Moving right along. Another fucking ad. Um, oh, is that the end of the fucking article? Oh, shit. Well, that's the end of the fucking article. Was there anything in here I wanted to look at? Yeah, let's see what this fastest growing category bullshit is. Okay, this is from January... 31st book sales by category print book sales still are well over pre-pandemic levels so 2021 was a record-breaking year i wonder if that was because of price so i guess non-fiction books were more popular however adult non-fiction is still the best-selling category among trade books okay well then don't bury the fucking lead like that adult non-fiction still dominates the market Oh, I wonder if that's because poetry is considered nonfiction, if that falls into the adult nonfiction thing. But that's what that is. I just don't understand why it can't just be its own fucking thing, dude. Okay, here we go. Poetry has gained some popularity over the last few years, but is way below the numbers from the beginning of the 21st century. Around, oh, these are the exact same fucking things I just read earlier. Dude, I really think this is a fucking shitty way to look at this using just data obtained from google trends like google trends are interesting to see what the population is searching for but that doesn't necessarily mean that that is a precise look at what's fucking happening and again i already went over why i thought that let me fucking scroll up here. I want to see something. Now I'm fucking getting mad. Okay, the fastest growing category. Around 3 million copies of poetry books are sold every year. That wasn't in the last thing. That should have been there. 3 million copies of books. That ain't bad. And I bet 2 million of those were rupees. Oh, and I can't believe people still have to buy Bibles. I thought those motherfuckers were just giving those things away. Whatever. I don't know. I'm kind of pissed off now. Um, so anyway... Um, so those are some numbers. Um, I When I first saw that article, I just glanced through it and saw that there were charts and shit, and I was all excited about it. But I was hoping that the information received from that would be from publishers and not based on Google Trends. Bittersweet. Bittersweet, I will say. Kind of cool, kind of not. Whatever. <laughs> haven't subscribed to this channel please do so especially if you found this information fun and exciting and if you think i'm pleasant so i'll keep these butt plugs short bloodshed review poetry lit mag out now get it at my etsy shop down below five dollars my book winner your mom's sodomy prize for poetry um only 125 copies of this beautiful little bitch 
Um, this is probably for sale now. I don't know exactly when this video is going to go up. But this comes out on June 15th. So whenever this goes up, this will go up. Maybe not yet. Join the Anarchy Crew. Also, extra, extra chapbook for June out now too at my Etsy shop. Only 50 copies of this. So I want to give a big thank you to all those motherfuckers over on Patreon who help support this show. I want to thank Michael, Cedar, Harry over at the YouTube Thank You Crew. I want to give a big thank you to to Patrick, to Britt, to Jan, to Deb, to Ethan, and to Julia. Thank you guys so much. And then... I want to give a big thank you to the big motherfuckers over there in the Anarchy Crew. I want to give a thank you to Buddy, to Nate, to Mandy, to Thomas, to Tim, J, to Shaylin, to Chill Baby, to Tamara, to Adam, to JH, to Chase, to Tim G. Thank you guys. And then I also want to give the biggest of thank yous to over there to the number one chappy at the chat book of the month club, Caitlin. Thank you. Thank you very much. There will be a playlist here somewhere for you guys. Time hard, everybody. Keep buying my books, and I'll talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.